But I would like to see Tiger Woods spitting a golf ball out of his mouth. Uh, yeah. Blow, blow, blow with all my might. The world barista champion! How far did you did you spit your seed? It's better than some things I've tasted, so hey. <laughs> Troy's like a brother to me. Well, more like a stepbrother. That I can fire if I want to. Doesn't seem to go up or down. It's not good. That's not good at all. This will be the last shot you take. Yep. You've heard of the faith of the mustard seed. Yeah. Climbing a melon. Don't get too far past that. This will be the last shot you take. Well, today we check out how another kind of seed nobody gets out of here without spitting has turned this small town into the watermelon capital of America. Let's get him going. Let's go. We want to see a good spit. Let's go. Get it! And later, a true champion of coffee shows me a taste like a pro. <laughs> I'm going to fire this thing up. Roll with it. That's me on lead guitar as the crew and I rock out on our way to Luling, Texas, a small town with a long tradition of marching to the beat of a different drum. Alex assures me we're almost there. But we are going the long way. We're going the wrong way. Well, that's awkward. What he meant was we were almost heading in the right direction, specifically to a Texas town whose identity revolves around a single fruit. Look at that gigantic watermelon. To be clear, I didn't come to Luling, Texas to climb a water tower shaped like a watermelon. But if you're me, you can't just drive by a water tower shaped like a watermelon and not try to climb it. That would be awesome. And really, what better spot to introduce you to the town that's become synonymous with Citrillus lanatus? That's Jamie Nichols standing underneath that vast melon. He's the somebody who's doing all he can to keep this town's fruity traditions alive. And that's James Mace from the local water department because somebody's got to help me get to the top of this thing. Oh, and they've got mosquitoes here, lots of them. Big, man, big old watermelon here in the town of Luling. The mosquitoes are big here too, enormous. Let's get a shot of a mosquito. Look at him. It's huge, dude, he's looking for blood. Dude. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Oh, oh, hold still, he's on your neck. I'm, I'm not gonna let him bite you, I promise. <laughs> oh. So brave. We're outside of town right now. We're going to climb the tower, get a look at the town. Then we're going to come back down to the tower, go into the town, and then I think we're going to spit some watermelon seeds and meet some watermelon eaters. Um, definitely. What about why, why thump? Why the word thump? Uh, yeah, well, thumping is because you thump a melon for ripeness. Okay, <laughs> of course. James is going to accompany me up the tower, and uh, so is Troy. Might as well let everybody know what's happening. You got your backpack on behind your backpack. You got a little GoPro. We'll be getting that shot. You don't need to do that just yet. <laughs> How high is the tower? 148 feet. And it's full of water? Full of water. And it's, sha it's shaped like a watermelon. It's shaped like a watermelon. How many times you climbed this? Uh, I see it was built in 98, so three or four. <laughs> three or four times a day? No, a year. Three or four, three or four years. Let's climb a tower. Cheers. Studies show the first step is always the most difficult. The studies are correct. And I'm off and running. Fortunately, I'm not bothered by heights. Widths, on the other hand, can be an issue. Come on. Especially when something goes wrong. Okay. It just hung up. My brand new mechanism is snagged on a pipe. Doesn't seem to go up or down. This is 
Kind of interesting, isn't it? Is he unbuckled? It's not good. No, Jamie, that's not good at all. I came to Luling, Texas to participate in a small town community tradition. This is not the small town tradition in question. This is me stuck on a water tower shaped like a watermelon, trying not to let my safety gear kill me. This does make it exciting, Troy. When you have a carabiner, I'll put him in there, and he just got the latch off, he's wrong. Decoupling. Oh, that feels better. OK. If you want to go up, I'll work on it a little bit. OK. But you're going to take this and each long. <laughs> Until you get up a little above me. Yeah, let me just get out of your way. So, <laughs> you get the idea of what's happening, but here's, here's what I'm seeing. James is trying to get that slider off right there. One of these days, somebody is going to write a book about the unintended hazards of safety gear. I'm going to write the foreword. This better be some watermelon. Yeah, climbing a melon. Now don't get too far past that. Okay. You really get sloped out there. Because okay. this will be the last shot you take. Yep. Be the best shot, but it'll be the last it'll shot. Be, you'll roll all the way down. <laughs> yeah, all the way. In the late 1800s, Luling was known as the toughest town in Texas. It was famous for renegade cowboys with a strong disrespect for the law. Today, it's been rebranded. We're perched atop of the very thing that, uh, <laughs> that brings life to this town. You're well, the bringer of the, of the, the giver of life. I get, I get the job. water to the houses. And the melons. James gets the water to the melons used for the event for which this town is now famous. A four-day watermelon festival started back in 1954 known as the Watermelon Thump which includes a world-famous seed-spitting contest. I think we're probably ready to go. We got people waiting to spit yeah, some watermelon seeds. Guinness Book of Records is someplace around 68 feet. 68 feet? Well, with the wind like this behind Oh, no, me. there's not going to be a wind behind you. Oh, well, that's, I don't know that I can spit anything 68 feet. Hey. You got to have a set of lungs on you. <laughs> Back on terra firma, it's time now to get into town and locate the legendary Luling Spitway among other things. The watermelon thump. 61 years of thumping. All we know for sure is that the spitway is on the main drag. How hard can it be to find a spitway? By way of comparison, this is not a spitway. This is a museum for baseball caps. Look at that. Finally found somebody with more caps than me. And some creepy mannequins. But this is the place where seed spitting legends are made, the Spitway. Hey, how are you? How are you doing, Mike? Fresh from the water tower, Jamie Nichols is there to prep me for the coming competition. What is your official title with respect to this annual event? Well, I'm actually the executive secretary of the Thump, mm -hmm. but I'm chairman of the seed spitting. You're the chairman? I'm seed spitting. <laughs> seed spitting. I'm championship seed spitting, I should say. The right. C-C-S-S. <laughs> now that we got that straight, it's time to spit or split. This are some of the folks you're gonna be spitting against. These are, that's the Camacho family. Jamie's lined up some seasoned spitters to go head to pucker with yours truly. The whole family? They're all champion spitters, all of them. Did, did, you, did you win all these? Uh, you got your family? That one is actually my dad's. Does it get competitive? Does it get nasty? Um, sometimes, it can, it can. At a glance, it looks like an Olympic diver. It's not. <laughs> it's a Luling spitter. Show me the, the big mamma jamba. Yeah, he's the that's one champion seed spitting trophy. Ooh. We have three different contests in Luling. We have a, a children's contest. Three of these compete in that. Right. Okay. Adult category, which is our championship category. And then we they've all spit in the team seed spitting, which is a lot of fun too. You have like team We have team a, seed spitting, that's correct. So like a relay? Like if, uh, if well, no, I mean, like you, know, a lot of people, you spit into somebody's mouth and they get uh, it and they spit it. <laughs> well, that would indicate the level of commitment you really have to the sport. Explain this to me. Uh, this is a this is a measuring stick. Use this after you spit. They'll take this, set it right on the line. Yeah. They'll take it out and measure how far your seed went. 
Well, we got one more person you're going to spit against, too. Oh, great. All yeah, right. We have our world record holder, Lee Wheelis, from 1989. Lee is right over here. <laughs> is this where you set the record? No, in 89, we did that on the street. Right in the middle of the street? We just shut down Davis Street. My wife and I had just gotten back from a Caribbean cruise, and we were just looking for something to do. She says, go give it a shot. So I stepped up and did it, and fate would have it. There it went. There it went. How far did you... Did you spit your seed? 68 feet, nine and a quarter inches. Man, is it just, are, you, are you really using your diaphragm or is it more just? Just a good set of lungs. So it's a deep breath. A deep breath and, uh, and quick. It's got to hit it hard, fast. Like a, yeah, right. It's like a blow right. dart. Right. Long ways? Yes, long ways is great. I've met the competition and got coached by them. Time now to load up on the ammo. A little technique in two and picking your seeds. As round as possible, heavy. You set it on your tongue, middle, front, back. Just roll it up in your tongue. Roll it up in the tongue. Like that. Try to get a little height on it. And now this, this is not in the air, you understand. This is where the seed stops. Like golf. Exactly. Just get like golf. Roll. I mean, not exactly like well, golf. not exactly. But I would like to see Tiger Woods spitting a golf ball out of his mouth. Uh, so. Yeah. <laughs> If we really were having a contest, we sing a couple of songs to pump everybody up. What kind of song would you sing? Uh, well, we one called Pump You Up Song. Oh, when I step up to that starting line, I'm going to blow with all my might this time, for I am eager and determined to show this grand old crowd just how much I can do. I'm going to blow, blow, blow with all my might. I'm going to send that seed on a record flight. I'm going to put my name in the Guinness Book, the Guinness Book. Just wait and see. <laughs> Now that I'm whipped into a frenzy, let the competition begin. First up, various members of the Camacho family. No, oh, that's a nice roll. That's 33 feet, nine and a half inches. Oh. Solid. 28 feet, seven inches. 33 feet, four and a half inches. Well, our best bit so far, 36, uh, right? Uh, then it's Lee's turn. Are you going to laugh at me when I don't spit as far as them kids did? I might. <laughs> but it'd be a good natured cackle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, 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 there's a little bit of that wow. gold championship coming out. 30, 60, 5 inches. Way to go. Wow. Good job. And finally, yours truly. Very nice. Take that seed and blow, Mike. Take that seed and blow. Go on, let's go. We want to see a good spit. Come on, Mike, let's go. Oh, Mike, get him in your face. Dig down, Mike. Come on, Mike. We got to get it. Come on, Mike. Get it. <laughs> oh! 34. What a good spin. Go, Mike. My personal record right now, 34 feet, two and a half inches. Nobody gets out of here without spitting. Where's my trophy? Technically, I came in third. I prefer to look at it as the top three. Mike. Yes, you're very kind. Uh, Thank for, you. For you being a quick learner, a wonderful student. Yeah. For you competing with dignity and honor. Thank you. You're going to be the champion in our hearts forever. Uh, I have to go now. <laughs> Today's watermelons were provided by Alan Watt, a local farmer right here in Luling, Texas, and world champion watermelon grower. Thump on. Coming up, from watermelon seeds to coffee beans, I'll meet a man whose passion for travel led him to find his true calling in the bottom of a coffee cup. Ah, Kansas City, a town known for its blues, its barbecue, and of course, more fountains than you can shake a turkey leg at. Kansas City is literally uh, bursting with fountains. They're all over the place. This is the part of the show where we prove it. My hope here was that my camera ace, Troy, would get up early, go around town, film a few of the hundreds of famous fountains Kansas City's known for. Instead, he shot this. And this. 
And this strange time lapse of our production coordinator, Dan. Yeah, that's what happens when Troy doesn't have his morning coffee. Fortunately, help is on the way. Inside this old brick warehouse in Kansas City is a man named Pete Licata, the quality assurance manager of Parisi Artisan Coffee. But first, I need to show you the video that a vigilant viewer brought to my attention. Is it American Gladiator? Is it the Hunger Games? No. It's the World Barista Championships in Melbourne, Australia, where the man in the red suit proclaimed... The World Barista Champion 2013, Pete Legato! I had no idea such a thing existed, but it does. And since this guy was declared the best barista in the whole wide world, I figured he was my best hope of getting a truly transformative cup of joe. So, let the games begin. I'm here. Hey. Hey, you're Pete. You're Mike. And uh, you are like this guy who knows the entire history of coffee distilled and <laughs> hardwired into the reptilian part of your brain. And I don't want to overstate it. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if I can take credit for all of the uh, history of coffee, but I do know a few things about it for sure. What skills does a barista need to have in order to take home the gold? Well, you have to be able to make great espresso, a great cappuccino, mm -hmm. and you have to be able to make a really, really interesting signature drink. And which one are you going to give me in the next minute or so? First of all, actually, let me give you a little bit of coffee here. All right, fine. So, I always do this myself because personally, you need a little something to just kind of get your mouth going and, and get your taste buds primed and ready for the really uh, amazing stuff. Now look, I'm addicted to coffee. Yes. I'll just tell you straight up. Right. It is a... I think we all are, right? Straight up. Well, yeah. No, no, no. There's addiction and there's what Troy does. Right. I've seen Troy drink coffee uh, right before going to bed. Big steaming cups of black coffee. Mm -hmm. And he can still sleep through it. Yeah, some people can. You're gonna like this, Troy. What is this? I'll take care of the questions, Troy. Just drink the coffee and run the camera. <laughs> Troy's like a brother to me. No, more like a stepbrother. That I can fire if I want to. That would taste good cold. Yes. See, that's just the kind of snooty, elitist comment you can expect from kinda Troy. Kind of got that from him, you yeah, know? This would taste nice chill. Right. Pete will prepare a cappuccino with a Brazilian coffee. And pay close attention to the cappuccino skills of a man who won five regional barista competitions on his way to becoming the part world part barista champion. You want to explain what you're doing here, this little fancy schmancy, look, you made a little heart. This is what we call latte art, right? It's just the I don't know, do they call it latte art? Yes, that's what it's called. This is basically just the white foam mixing in with the brown crema of the espresso. I see. Yes. Mm. Yeah, Pete's cappuccino is artistic and delicious. How hard can it be to make one? And it's gonna start grinding. Uh, you feel it getting warmer. Yeah. And just pour down the center. Got it. That is something. Yes! <laughs> Look at that. It's a Mustang. Hmm. A running pony. His head is down here. He's kicking his feet backwards there. So, well, why don't you have a sip of mine and tell me what you think? <laughs> don't hold back. And keep an open mind. It's a little grainy. Yeah, I was going for grainy. Mm. It's um, not terribly sweet. I didn't want it terribly sweet. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little astringent. That's what I was shooting for. Mm -hmm. A little astringent, not terribly sweet, slightly grainy piece of non-artistic latte. Those are, those are good descriptors. It's important to be able to leave yourself enough slack to mm. improve, manage expectations. Well, for your first attempt, I would say that it's better than some things I've tasted. So hey, you're in, the, you're in a good spot. All right, so I'm never going to know all that Pete knows. I'm probably not even pronouncing the names of the beans right. Palomar. La Loma, El Roble Levado, mm, La Chevelle, Cazute. But Pete does assure me he can teach me how to taste coffee like a pro, a process they call cupping. To the cupping room. To the cupping room. 
Okay, we're gonna grind these guys. Not too coarse, but not too fine. Pete, what do you think of the AeroPress? Uh, the AeroPress is the ugliest coffee brewer that's out there. Every so often, um, Troy but it actually to makes a really a good question. Cup of coffee. I don't know I why. It, I think it has, no, no, no. as far as flavors concerned, that he's a cameraman. Some cameraman. He's just so curious about how he can't help himself. I'm not a big fan of the mm -hmm. Yeah. He's not, he's not done yeah, yet. I don't even know why I'm here, honestly. All right, here's what we're gonna do. Wow, these are great. The table moves, the chairs move, yeah, everything we can, moves. we can move everything. Viewers vomiting from coast to coast. <laughs> so, first things first, when we cup coffee, we're going to smell them. Smells like dark roasted coffee? It sure does. Perfect. So you just poured hot water right into the ground. Yep. So we, we have hot, hot coffee, hot water, coffee grinds soaking together. We're gonna take our spoon. You're gonna put your nose down there and you're actually gonna break the crust. I'm gonna break the crust. Right. Mix it around. I have to admit, it changes, it changes everything. So now, what we do is just take a little bit of coffee and we're going to slurp it just like you're gonna slurp hot soup, right? Wow, that was more satisfying. Right, so now we're tasting some differences in yeah, the yeah. coffees, right? Uh -huh. The purpose of slurping the coffee is to essentially spray the coffee, <laughs> have a spray across your palate so it covers all of your taste buds. This is a standard way to taste coffees. Coffee is very good job. Mm. Nice. Whoa. So we continue our cupping. Yeah, I'm curious about this one. And in the course of smelling and slurping, I learned that coffee started out as just a day job for Pete when he was studying Japanese, which he thought was his ticket out of Kansas City. Then he attended a workshop by a competitive barista. In 2004, I met the reigning world champion at the time. Who's that? Uh, his name's Tim Wendelbo. He's in... Uh, Tim who? Wendelbo. He's Norwegian. Wendelbo? Mm-hmm. That's yeah. too bad. <laughs> Meeting the great Wendelbo inspired Pete to burnish his barista skills for a few years, which ultimately led to a life-changing moment. And then about 07, 08 was the first time I went to an international coffee event. Where was that? In Tokyo. And this was my first trip outside of the country. It was my first trip to Japan, which I had always wanted to go to. Uh, and it was the World Barista Championship and, right. and everything with these coffee people. And I always wanted to travel the world and I never ever thought that it would be coffee that would get me there. It was this moment where I realized that I was part of a community that spans the entire globe and I wanted to be a part of it. It took another five plus years of hard work, learning absolutely everything there is to know about is, coffee until he finally made it to the top. This is the passion. I mean, look, look at your face there, man. That, that, that is exultant. <laughs> that is victorious. That's, yeah. that, that's, that's passion and, and everything, like coming together. Absolutely, that's, that's what I strive for. And that's also something that I was striving for for years of my life, trying to achieve, you know? Trying to be the best in the world at something, and it's something that's inspired me to continue down this path. Yeah. If there was a moral to this episode, it might have something to do with the power of planting a seed, or maybe harvesting a bean. Whether it's a world-class watermelon or a world-class cup of coffee, greatness always starts. And that's really great. With something small. Oh, Troy, you should try this. This is seriously the best cup of coffee you'll never have. <laughs> Here, try it.